What's going on my broskies? My name is Totski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we're having the showcase video for my man Roronoro Zoro as an anniversary exclusive Sugofest exclusive character similarly to K-Dad and the waifus Hancock, Nami and Robin. So this is a character that you're not going to get a lot of access to. So it's a very restricted character. Is this character ultimately worth it? And that's what we're going to be answering in this video. So let's go ahead and start breaking down each of his abilities. There's going to be a fair few clips here. We've got one versus the uh, Kaido turtle farming event. Then we've got two arenas, Ashura Doji and San Juan Wolf to see a huge damage increase. And then obviously we have a Garp challenge finishing off with the worst generation. So let's go ahead and start things off with his captain ability. So Zora himself is a dex slasher free spirit. I like the fact that he's a free spirit unit. And then in his captain ability, he boosts the two classes that he is, being both slasher and free spirit, boosting both of those by 5.4 with a matching slot, 5.25 times otherwise, which is a huge attack boost. Then providing a 1.2 health boost and a 10% damage reduction effect. So relatively tanky and also a lot of damage output. Then there is a really interesting added effect where if he has a tandem or a Wano slot and you tap on him as a captain, then he increases chain addition boosts by 0.25. And that's basically it. And this is probably one of the downsides to Zor is that, you know, he does a lot of damage and he's tanky, but that's basically all he does. Like, he doesn't give you cooldown reduction at the start of the quest, which would have been nice. Uh, he doesn't give you any more matching slots, unfortunately. Uh, and, you know, spoiler alert, he doesn't have anything in his kit that enables him to generate tandem or Wano slots on himself. It's uh, relying on other characters in order to do that. So when you think about that, it's not a great captain. It's a usable captain for sure but it's not the greatest. Now, moving on from that though, you get access to his superclass for superclass slashes, and this definitely helps out his captain ability a lot as it allows you to do 75 times his attack and typeless damage to all enemies, and then the two classes that he boosts, being slasher and free spirit, he gives those two classes a 2.5 times attack boost for one turn. So the fact that he can be your crew's dedicated attack booster with his superclass special, which remember, doesn't activate enemy interrupts, is incredibly powerful. Also, depending on the situation, you can use his superclass special to wave clear certain mob stages, allowing you to get like a pseudo speed farming type of effect. Once again, that is dependent on the content that you're coming up against because he doesn't have any cooldown reduction in his superclass and his captain ability also does not provide cooldown reduction. So either way, it is still a nice effect to get access to. A 2.5 attack boost that is uninterruptible and it's for two classes is pretty phenomenal, especially because one of those classes is is free spirit in particular. So, so far we've seen his captain ability, which seems solid, and then he has a super class special, which is pretty good. So his special ability is really odd. It cuts his, his own HP by 20%. So he's a self-inflicting HP cut, which is not a bad thing. That's definitely usable in a lot of cases. Then he deals a million fixed damage to all enemies that goes through everything, including normal attacks only, which doesn't really matter too much, but a million fixed damage guaranteed is kind of cool. Then he has a really cool utility effect of reducing rainbow shield and a damage threshold by six turns. So it's a little bit niche, but the fact that he has a utility effect inbuilt in the special is just nice to have. And then he also gives slasher and free spirit characters a chain multiply growth rate increase depending on the tap timing of their normal attacks. Very similar to Super Tandem Kid and Super Tandem Law and Strength Legend Ulti. This is uh, very similar to those where if you hit a good, you get a 0.2 chain increase, a great gives you a 0.4 chain increase, and then a perfect gets you a 0.6 chain increase. And this stacks with any other chain additive and chain multiplicative boost, which is very strong. And then he further says that if your captain's slot is a tandem or a Wano slot, then you will go ahead and give your crew a 1.5 times chain multiplicative buff for one turn. So this is one thing that uh, now we know how this actually works. So in the special here, it does mention at the bottom 1.5 times chain multiplier. Now this is a chain multiplicative buff, very similar to the switch effect of 
um, Sanji Judge, V2, VV Rebecca, um, very similar to those types of characters. So this is a chain multiplicative buff that stacks with a chain boost. But the thing is, is when you look at his captain ability, he will go ahead and increase chain additive boosts by 0.25 when you have a tandem or a Wano slot and you tap on this character. So it is odd the fact that Zora's captain ability doesn't actually boost the chain multiplicative buff that he provides with his own special so that is very odd it means that you have to run another character on your crew that actually gives you a chain boost and then once you have a tandem or a wano slot on this character he will buff that boost so it is a little bit bizarre in the way that they have designed his uh, his actual special i think it would have made a lot more sense if he just gave a chain boost with his special but at the same time that you got to look at it in the fact that chain multiplicative buffs are so rare you do not see many of them around and especially in specials you know as we said a lot of them come from super types or from switch abilities of, of dual characters so being able to get access to a chain multiplicative buff in a special is very rare so I suppose that's the reason why they've done it this way but I think honestly the way this character is structured I don't think it would have been that much of a stretch just to add a chain boost on top of it as well um, you know if you wanted a better chain boost you know just go ahead and have another character that does a better chain boost then launch a Zora special but I think like at least like a 1.0 chain boost on top of this as well would have been even better because unfortunately when you launch Zora's special and if you are just relying on his special to carry you through a mini boss the damage that he provides isn't amazing. The way that I see Zora's special is that it's going to be very good as an additional bonus damage increasing effect that you can use to get additional damage to take you over the top. You know, obviously, if you're doing a lot of damage, you want to have attack boosts or boosts color affinity, potentially a conditional boost, whatever it may be. But chain buffs are typically nice ways to give you that additional edge, to give you that little bit of extra damage to get you over the edge to kill a boss. It's, it shouldn't really be seen as a dedicated boost that allows you to kill a boss because the damage that it provides doesn't compare to what you get from attack boosts or boosts, etc. So due to all of that, I feel like Zora is not that type of legend that's going to carry you hardcore through a lot of content. And this is why I don't think that a lot of people should go out of their way to pull for this character. Yes, this is a restricted character. You're not going to get access to the character all the time, similar to Kdad and the waifus. But this isn't really a character that I see being used in a lot of content. Like, I think if you are running a Free Spirit-ish team, and, you know, obviously if the boss has, like, a damage threshold and, like, a rainbow shield, this is going to be amazing because this has the ability to remove those effects and the fact that it has these, these really unique chain buffs that you don't see very often, like the tap timing chain and chain multiplicative in a special. This is going to be a huge damage increase to, like, dex teams, Free Spirit teams, or slasher teams, moving forward and this character does synergize relatively well with K Dad that released previously but more importantly another character that he synergizes perfectly with is the super tandem Luffy that came out during the 8th anniversary earlier this year as they share the free spirit class they also share themselves being dex characters Luffy provides a full board of tandem slots which Zoro can potentially abuse with his captain ability to enhance any chain additive buffs that are on your crew Luffy also provides provides super class free spirit for Zoro who is also free spirit and also you get access to a really strong orb boost which you can enhance even further with his super class being Luffy that is and super class of Luffy also provides a base attack boost. Zoro and Luffy synergize so well together it almost feels like Zoro was supposed to release alongside Luffy um, and also the fact that Zoro is a character that can actually proc the super tandem of Luffy and obviously as we know you want to use super tandems within the first few characters that you attack with and of course with Zora's captain ability you want to attack with him early so that he increases the chain buffs for the rest of the crew they synergize so well together I really cannot wait to see how this character is going to perform moving forward as we go into the super boss Kizuna era this month in November because he's going to synergize so so well with that Luffy and very briefly, I want to talk about his support because it is very good. It's a very generic support as it attaches to any slasher. And when you reach the final battle, you get a 0.5 chain additive buff 
for the crew for one turn. So it is a little strange that, you know, his special is so, you know, focused on these unique chain buffs, but then his support just does a regular chain boost, which it kind of would have been interesting if he did a very rare uh, chain buff with his support as well. I think that would have been pretty awesome. And, you know, it is a little bit unfortunate that this character doesn't have super tandem or a final tap because it definitely would have made him a lot more powerful and he could kind of stand on his own two feet a little bit better than what he currently does. But at the end of the day, he is still a very strong legend that is really going to give you just a slight edge in increasing your damage output. Likely going to be used a lot in Super Boss Kizuna's uh, definitely for sure, but that's going to wrap it up for me. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about the Roro no Resort Super Sugo Fest exclusive, not a Super Sugo Fest exclusive, but an any exclusive character down below in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.